Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. That's our plan and purpose, the Lord willing, that we'll every, Sunday, every Sunday we'll take a chapter in 1 Peter and finish all those chapters and we get into chapter 2, God permitting. So 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, Peter was a very unique person. He was a very dedicated, determined man. And we know that he had many issues he had to deal with, and all of us do. We've got certain areas we have to work on every day. We just thank God for God's patience, God's long-suffering, God's mercy, and God's great grace that he gives to each of us every day. We thank we've been redeemed by the blood of Christ, and, and we find that even Peter makes that known. For as much as you know, do you really know that you've been saved by the grace of God? Do you know if you died today that heaven would be your home? You need to search your heart and not wait until that time comes that it might be too late. We always encourage our people to go down memory lane to the time and place where you know that you know you ask Christ to come into your heart and be your Savior. We always tell our people, if you haven't done it, you can do it today. There may not be a tomorrow. We find that one day Peter would, uh, uh, Pierre was here singing, and then next day we find out he's in the hospital having two stents put into his heart. So life is so uncertain. I mean, every day is a gift. We get up and say, thank God for another day we can take part in the life that God gives to us. We go to 1 Peter chapter 1, and what we'll do, we'll look at each verse as we look at it, we'll pick out different things and kind of uh, go over these verses and pick out certain things uh, to emphasize. In 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethany. He's writing to the dispersed or scattered uh, uh, people of that day that were Christians and uh, the persecution they were undergoing and the trials and the traumas and troubles of life. They had been scattered. and They were in different parts of the Roman world at that time. And so this message is going out to them personally, but also to all Christians, wherever they might be. That includes us. And so we go to the word in verse 2, and sometimes people have a problem with this word, elect, predestination. And uh, there's no real problem with it when you understand what those terms mean. Verse 2 says to the elect. The word elect means the choice, the chosen ones. That's what the word means. When you find the word elect or election, it just simply means that you've been chosen by God, by His grace and by His mercy. He's chosen us out of the world, out of darkness into His marvelous light. We're God's chosen ones. So that word elect, it means choice, chosen. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto, un unto obedience and strengthen of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Now if we look at one verse, we see there's so many things that you could really begin to talk about. That word, for, foreknowledge. And I put down some other words, foreknowledge, and also foreknown, uh, foreordained, uh, foreknow, foreknowledge, uh, foreordained, foreknown, all those simply terms that God knew us from the very beginning before the foundation of the world. And we always say that God would not be God if he did not know what would happen to Adam and Eve in that garden. He knew what they would do. It was not God's purpose and God's plan for them to rebel and defy and turn their back on his word. And he says, do not eat of that tree. Satan says, oh, go ahead and eat of it. And you'll become a God yourself. You won't have to answer to anyone. And you'll be able to understand good from evil. And God says that the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. That's spiritual death, physical death, eternal death, separation from God. We emphasize that over and over again. People need to understand that we're all in the same boat. We're all sinners by nature. It just comes naturally. Sin on us, sin around us, and sin above us. It's all, all, all right there. And so God chose us. Before the foundation of the world, we'll point some of these places out where you can find them. But uh, right here is one of them. Chosen. Foreknowledge of God, the Father. And the word foreknowledge, the word sanctification, 
The word sanctification is a very unique word also. And it comes up, uh, there's three words, the word holy, the word saint, and the word sanctify all come from the same Greek root word, which means to separate. It talks about separation. That's what the word sanctify, the word holy. So all these Bible, the Bible chapters starts off until the, to the saints, which are at Corinth. That means those who have been called out, the elect of the chosen, redeemed by the blood of God, uh, his son. And so the word is very unique. Saint, holy. You'll find the word holy mentioned again in a few moments about four different times in this chapter. And so we've been called to be saints. We're called to be holy. And we're God's sanctified ones. We've been set apart and separated unto God and for God. Very unique position that God has given to every child of God. We need to understand that's the great grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God being exhibited to us who are certainly cannot work for our salvation. We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. We can't buy it. It's simply for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake, we hammered on this last week. For your sake, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Rich in the blessings of Almighty God that's given to each of us. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Everything that Christ has is ours. Our unique position that he's placed us in by his mercy and his grace. Hallelujah, what a Savior. So we look at another term. The word elect, the word foreknowledge, the word sanctify, the word sanctification. The word, here's the blood of Jesus Christ. It'll be mentioned again in a few moments. He says, in elect, foreknowledge of God, sanctified of the Spirit, unto the obedience and strength of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace, that's another great word, grace. We hammer away that tremendous word. Uh, a lot of grace verses. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, to find grace to help in time of need. That word grace, unmerited favor. God given us something we do not deserve. Can't buy it. Don't deserve it. Can't work for it. It's simply a gift of God, His bounty, His blessing, that He showers upon anyone, everyone who will receive it. And so we come to the, these words that just loom up. The word elect, the word foreknowledge, the word sanctification, the word blood of Jesus Christ, the word grace, the word peace. All these are found in that one little verse. I mean, it's power packed with terms that we need to understand that applies to us as the children of God. Special. And he goes on to say this. Uh, let's read, read verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God through the sanctification of the Spirit and to obedience the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied. We have the peace of of God. We have the peace with God. Listen, we find that every one of us that are not saved, the Bible says we're children of disobedience, we're children of wrath by nature. We're the children of Satan. Those people at one time we looked at just a few weeks ago, those people thought that God was their father, our father which art in heaven. God does not become your father until you're born again. And then you become a child of God. And then he becomes your father. You're God's creation. But he only becomes your father when you receive the new birth. He talks about being born again in this chapter right here. Jesus talked, you must be born again. We're born one time physically through the mother of our, of our mother's womb. And one day there was a fellow by the name of Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night. And Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean I've got to enter into my mother's womb again? No, no, no. He says, that's a spiritual birth. You must be born spiritually. That means you must be made alive. We're, in Christ, we become alive. In, in Adam, whereas by one man sin entered into the world, Adam and by sin by death passed upon all men for all have sinned. By one man, we find that God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, by one man came peace and sanctification, separation, called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. That word peace, God wants to give you a peace 
that passeth all understanding, though there's a damning flu, uh, uh, an epidemic of the flu all over this world, affecting everybody, no matter how bad it may get. Listen, we are in the grace of God. We're in the love of God. We are the God's power, uh, His strength. And He says this right here. He says, He wants to give you a peace that passeth all understanding. Everything may be breaking loose. Everything may be falling apart. A lot on your table you wish was not there, but it's there. If it's not there, it will come. You've got to deal with it by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the strength of God to get you through this experience. What are you facing today? What's on your plate? You say, preacher, I don't have anything on my plate. Well, stick around. It'll come. I tell our people, listen, it'll come. Before you know it, Mr. Disappointment will knock on your door. Mr. Heartache and heartbreak is going to knock on your door. Mr. Sickness and suffering and death is going to knock on your door. It's coming. So you need to be prepared. Forearm, be prepared. These things, God wants you to do. Listen, if you're forearmed, you can be ready for that thing when it comes. Whatever it might be. Disappointment, discouragement, defeat, depression. A lot of people discouraged. A lot of people defeated right now. But God wants you to get out of that place of position and get his strength and grace and power to get up and keep moving for Jesus. He says, he says, this, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Keep serving Jesus when it's raining, when it's storming, when it, listen, just keep serving Jesus all times. Let's go to the next verse. Go to verse four. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according, according to his abundant mercy, mercy, his abundant mercy, hath begotten us. That word begotten means he's birthed us. That's where you get the word new birth, begotten. Begotten us to a living or lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus Christ did come at God's appointed time, in God's appointed way, at God's appointed place. He prophesied all through those those 39 books of the Old Testament. The Lamb of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Savior, the Redeemer is coming. He did come as God predicted. The Bible says this. Because He did come, He says, He came and took our sin upon Himself, shed His blood on that cross, His body dripping in blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. There's no forgiveness. In Revelation, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I know how my sins are removed. I know how they're forgiven. Not baptismal water. Not stopping this, starting that, joining that, quitting this. It's receiving a person. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can't overemphasize that. A lot of people miss that. I've got to be baptized. I've got to stop this, start that. No, no, just receive that person. Jesus Christ kept all the law for you. He's the only one that could do it. It had to be a, a had to be a perfect sacrifice without blemish, without spot. That's the only thing that God will accept. The perfect sacrifice. Nobody on the earth can 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 meet that bill. We all have sin on us and us around us. The one that never sinned is the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the sacrifice. He, by the grace of God tasted death for every man. Why? For the wages of sin is death. And Jesus took our dead sentence. And he paid that wage, that wage and price. We're bought with a price. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we need to, he says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God is our reasonable sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove Discern, decipher, that perfect will of God. God wants you to keep serving him no matter what. And you can by his grace and strength. He says this. He's given us a living hope. Our hope is alive. It's a blessed hope. A living hope. It's a sure hope. My anchor holds. <laughs> Though the ship is battered and the sails are torn, my anchor holds. It's in the solid rock. The Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. To an inheritance. Did you have an inheritance? Yeah, you had an inheritance. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. 
And everything that Christ has is yours. To an inheritance, it's incorruptible. Underline the word incorruptible. It says, and undefiled. It's undefiled. The Bible says, it abideth forever. The Bible says, it's reserved in heaven. You have a reservation in heaven. It was bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's all right here. It just looms out of you in these verses that we're reading. To inherit incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth out of the way, reserved in heaven for you who are kept. I like that verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God. Oh, listen. There's no power equal to God. There's no force. There's no, there's no, listen. Jesus Christ is the fullness of Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ came. Listen. He's the, one, he's the head of all principalities and powers. And by him, all things were created, whether they be visible, invisible. All things were created by him and for him. And all things consist or held together by him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Son of God. The one who shed his blood. The one who conquered death, hell, and the grave. And rose again from the dead. That's our salvation. That's our redemption. It's all in the blood of Jesus Christ. All right here. We go on to the next verse. Who are kept by the power of God. Through, the, through, the, through faith and to salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. You know our salvation is a threefold experience. It's many things you can see. We've been saved from the penalty of sin. Because Jesus bore our penalty on Calvary cross. Penalty has been paid for. We're being saved from the power of sin every day that we live. As a now that you have these two natures, you, as a child of God, you still have that Adamic nature, very active and busy in your life. You have a new nature now, and we've been made alive in Jesus Christ. We've been saved from the penalty of sin. We're being saved from the power of sin that wants to dominate and control us every day. And he one day will be saved from the presence of sin. Isn't that wonderful? We're judged as a sinner at Calvary. We're judged as a son or daughter every day as a child of God. And one day at the beam of the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be saved. And we're rewarded. We'll be rewarded there. Judged as a... Every one of us one day must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Not for salvation. That's a done deal. But for the deeds you've done in your body. Everything that you've done in your body, your mind, your thinking, you're doing. You've got to give an account of that. Can you imagine that? Everyone standing before the Lord Jesus Christ at the beam of the judgment seat of Christ and have to give an account of every thought, every deed, every action. You say it's going to take a long time. Well, where are you going? This is eternity. And when they can take all this stuff that's out there, the airways, and put them on a little chip and compact all that, God, my Savior, the Lord Jesus, has no problem dealing with everything in our life. He knows about it. It's recorded. And so every day we've got to say, keep my mind straight. Keep my life straight. Help me, God, to think right, to live right, to be right. Every day, Paul says, I die daily. What mean? I am crucified with Christ. Crucify, sanctify, mortify. These are terms that we need as children of God. Mortify, consider to whom you yield your body, your members to his servant you are, whether sin unto death or to life eternal. So my hands, my eyes, my, we, we yield those things every day to something or someone every day. And God says, yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Before you were the servants of sin and Satan, and you used your members as, as instruments of Satan, but now as children of God, Excuse me. Our lives account for Jesus. God help me. Every day is a battle and a challenge for every child of God. Every one of us have to deal with issues every day in our life. And God knows that. God is long-suffering. God is patient. God is merciful. He's so merciful. He's so long-suffering. He's so patient with us. I thank God for that. Every one of us have those things in Jesus. These are riches that, that people don't... Our riches don't have to be material things or money or silver or gold. There's so many uncertain riches of Christ. Then you've got the true riches of Christ. His mercy, His grace, His long-suffering, His patience. God's gift of love to each of us. These are gifts from God. 
But come on down. Now, you say in verse 6, that's, that's a hallelujah verse. Praise God. I'm, I've got a, I've got a res reservation of heaven. My, 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 my reservation is my inheritance. It's incorruptible, undefiled, don't fade away. It's reserved in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That'll make a bad shout. Glory. Praise God. And then God said, wait a minute. I'm going to kind of balance this thing out. But he says that next if need be. Whoa. I do not need the fiery trial in my life. Oh, God says, oh, you need it. I don't need this in my plate. No, it would not be there unless God allowed it to be there. He says in this next verse, this verse here, verse 6, where you greatly rejoice. I rejoice in the fact I know I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm redeemed. I'm going there no matter what. I can't lose my salvation. Hallelujah. But down here in the nasty now where we live right now, he says this, but if need be for a season, the seasons of life that we experience every day in our life. What season are you in right now? I'm in the season where the sun, we were over the beach for about, well, about a week and a half. We, we stayed there one week and Rachel said, Dad, it's your birthday and Father's Day. I want to buy your plate for another week. I said, go for it. <laughs> we watched the sunset. So, so yeah, I'm living, I'm 83 years old. I'm not, my sunset years are, it's bleeding. I got one one foot on a banana peeling, and another foot in the grave. And so I'm saying, when you get our age, <laughs> when 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 we get, any age thing can jump on you, but when you get into 83, 86, Why? 87, Five. 80, don't rush. Brother. 85. Frank's not here. We got a, we got two men in our church in their nineties. George called me yesterday and said, Preacher, we won't be there. We're st I say, stay safe, brother. Stay home. Stay out of that congregation, people. Be safe. He said, I didn't want to call and touch base with you. I said, I'm glad you called, George. He's 92 or 93. Can you imagine that? Pushing 100, man. I'm so glad you're here today. Don't know what age you are, but every day is a gift from God. You get up and say, Lord... I want a peace of past with all understanding. I don't want to be a mully rubber, find fault, be critical, always on the down path. I don't like to be around a person who's negative all the time. I like an upbeat person. Give me some positive stuff. I'm very positive I'll have some trouble today. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you it's going to come at one hand or another. God wants you to understand that no matter what you face, there is no temptation or trial or testing taken, but is common to man. It's common. But God is faithful. Who will not allow or permit you to be tempted above that you're able. God knows what your breaking point is. I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to throw in the towel. God says, oh, you don't know what you can take yet. You, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think it's bad? It'll probably get worse before it gets better. But for the child of God, I can't overemphasize it. It will get better for the child of God. Look what he says here. But if, verse 6, where do you agree? Though, not, though, though now for a season, man, you shall be glad when this season's over. If need be, you are in heaviness. You're, 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 you're in heaviness. It's, it's so heavy. Through the, what are you, what's the heaviness? Tell me right here. Look at it. It's right here. If need be, you're in heaven through manifold temptation. The word manifold, different temptations, trials, and testing. And every one of us have them. If need be, you're in heaviness. Are you in heaviness today financially, physically? You're going through a special time, emotionally, psychologically. Listen, all of us have these seasons of life that we encounter, we must endure, we must face. And this is for all children of God. This is being written for all children of God. Those who are dispersed, but all Christians, this message is going out. Listen, you can rejoice and say, praise God for all the blessings of God. But hang on. If need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, that's what it says. Heaviness. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith, your faith will be tried and tested. If it's not tried and tested, it's not worth anything. Your faith 
Your belief system will be tested and tried. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found to do praise and honor and glory at the period of Jesus Christ. These things we're facing, they don't even come, they don't even compare to the things that we're going to, the blessing, the sufferings that you have to go through down here, they're nothing compared to the glory and the, the, the grace that God gives to us through Christ. And right here, verse 8. Whom having not seen, you love. And whom though know you, you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can rejoice. Though you don't see him, you, haven't, you can't touch him, but you know your faith, your belief, your trust is in him who's conquered death, hell, and the grave. Said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you no matter what you face if you just look to me. Most times we don't look to Jesus. We look other places. Look what he says in verse 9. Receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Come on over to the next verse. We finish up with this. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching the water, what manner of time the Spirit of God or Christ was in them, did signify it. Then he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should glory. The sufferings of Christ is his suffering as death. The glory is his resurrection. They prophesied these things. They predicted these things. Though they weren't able to enjoy them themselves at that time, but it's on its way. It's coming. Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister these things, which are now reported unto you by them that preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire, the prophets desire to search. The angels desire to look. The angels can't even, they don't, they don't even know what salvation is all about. They desire to look into these things. It says that verse, angels. Angels. Verse uh, 7, verse 12. Desire to look into, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, as obedient children, are you an obedient child of God or disobedient child? Are you in a state of rebellion and disobedience? He will not kick you out of his family, but he will, he will chastise him. He'll encourage you to come back on track. Look what he says now in verse, uh, he says, verse, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. In your spiritual ignorance and deception and depravity, your spiritual ignorance, don't be pulled back with those things. Verse 15. But he which hath called you is holy. Verse 15 and 16, the word holy just stands out. Holy, holy. He which has called you is holy, so be ye holy. In all manner of conversation. The word conversation means your conduct, your manner of life. Your daily living should be a holy life. Decently different. Come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord. Your holy life, he says here. Called you to be holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. God wants us to mimic him. He wants us to follow his example and be decently different. When all you are being bombarded, all these things, that if need be, you're in heaven. Is through different trials and testings and temptations that's going to come to all of us. You can see, God will see you through these things. Verse 17. Verse 17, if you call on the Father who without respect of person, just according to every man's work, pass the time of his sojourning here in fear, reverential respect. Verse 18, for as much as you know, for as much as you know, do you know this? For as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. There's that word, your manner of life, your conduct, empty, vain, nothing to it. You're not redeemed by these things temporal passing things but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ he says this for as much as you know you're not redeemed corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ there's that word precious blood of Christ but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb and without blemish without spot that lamb of God had to be without blemish without spot had to be a perfect sacrifice and the only one who can fulfill that bill is the Lord Jesus Christ Look at verse 20. 
who verily was foreordained. He was foreordained. No foreknowledge. He was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. He was prophesied and predicted and foreordained. For he was he you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians chapter four, one four. Before the found we were chosen in him before the found were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knew your name. He knew he knew he, he knows who you are. You're no you're no Johnny come lately. You're you're special to God. Whom he foreknew before the foundation of the world was manifest in his last time for you. Verse 20. By him who to believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Verse 20. Seeing that you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. We're to love one another as brothers and sisters. Verse 23. This comes out. Being born again. Don't you like this term? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorrupt by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Look at verse 25. For the word of God liveth and endureth forever. The word forever. Verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 25. For the word of God endureth forever. And this is the word whereby the gospel is preached unto you. In between 23 and 24 comes 24, verse 24. We'll close verse 24. For all flesh is as grass. All the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower there are falleth away. Our life is just a mist, a vapor that appears for a little time. Our life of the flesh is like grass. It blooms, there's flowers, then they will, they die, and they're no more. In between 20, forever. But there are temporal things that just pass away. Are we living for the eternal things? Or living for the temporal things? May God help me and may God help you to look at our life and say, am I truly a child of God? Have I truly been born again? I'm trusting the blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone to save me from the devil's hell. We're so glad you're here today. So glad we could go over these verses with you. And God being a helper, we'll pick up with chapter to the Lord willing next Sunday morning. Then Wednesday, Steve will have something for us ready, be preaching for the Wednesday service. But well, we're so glad to have you today.